Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at looping, what that means, and how we can uh, do this in C++. So the basic concept behind looping is that we have a bunch of code that we want to execute uh, more than one time. So let's go ahead and see how we would write out the first uh, five numbers. So if we were going to do this without looping, this is what we would do. We do C out one. Oops, we don't need we don't need this the strings. One comma two comma three comma four comma five. and end line at the end, if I could type it correctly. All right, so we build this and run it. We see, hey, we get one, two, three, four, five printed out. That's nice. What if we wanted to do the numbers all the way up to 100? Well, we don't want to write that out manually because that's just going to be um, far too tedious. So that's where uh, the idea of looping or loops come in. So the first loop we're going to take a look at is the for loop. So the for loop is made up of four basic areas. There's the for keyword, you get a space, and then you have parentheses. And the parentheses, or inside the parentheses, there are three different sections of the for loop. Uh, the first section is called the initialization section. That's closed off by a semicolon. Then the next uh, next section is the condition section, and so the loop continues to execute while this condition evaluates to true. So these conditions are the same conditions that we saw in the last video about uh, decision making and if statements. The third part inside the for loop uh, parentheses is the increment stage. So typically when we do a for loop, we do some sort of iterator or counter uh, so maybe we're going to go to 1 to 5, for example. And so each time we go through the loop, we want to increment that counter variable. So there's some three different, or there's a important pieces of information you need to know about each one of these loops. The initialization section only gets run bef uh, the first time through the loop. So it actually happens before the loop starts to execute. The condition is evaluated at the end of each loop, and the increment happens at the end of the loop as well. All right, so the next piece of the for loop is the are the statements. This is the code that you want to run during each iteration of the loop. OK, so let's go ahead and convert that top line, see what this is going to look like in C++ in a for loop. So in our initialization section, we're going to declare a variable. So we do this just like we did before. I'm going to call it int n equals 1. My condition is going to be n is less than or equal to 5. And my increment is going to be this special plus plus operator, which increments a value by 1. So this is the equivalent of saying, oops, of saying n equals n plus 1. There's also another shorthand way of saying this is n plus equals 1. So there's a uh, shorthand version of this plus, uh, plus equals for each of the four basic mathematic operator, mathematical operators. So there's plus, there's multiplication, subtraction, and division. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and write those out for you. Little little side note. So there's plus equals, minus equals, oops star equals and slash equals. All right, so this is uh, addition. This is subtraction, multiplication, and division. And so this is just a shorthand way that we don't have to write uh, this whole piece each time. Okay, and so this plus one, or this plus plus, just is a even shorter way of doing this. All right, enough about that. All right, so for our statements, what we want to do is we actually want to do a C out of the value n, and then we actually want to put out a comma. 
So if we go ahead and run this, oh, and at the end, after we're done with the loop, we want to see out an end line. Can't type that for some reason. All right, so we build, we run, and we should see two lines of numbers. Ah, perfect. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, but you'll notice that there's actually one difference. Uh, there's a comma after each number in here, but in our last number on our first list, there's no comma. So how do we actually take care of that? So that's actually pretty straightforward. Make use of some of our if statements that we saw before. So I'll close off this C out n, and then we'll do an if statement. So we'll say if n does not equal 5, then we will output a comma. And so you'll notice that I actually don't have any curly braces around uh, on this if statement. This works when you only have one line of code that you want to execute. So instead of having to do this for just having one line of code, we can do a little shorthand method and skip out on those braces. And so the next line of code will be included with this if statement as the statement that gets executed if the condition is true. So be very careful though, if you have another line like this, you'll see Xcode actually already reformatted it for me. But you might see something like this where someone added this code later, or you just didn't realize that you forgot your curly braces. Uh, this piece of code will always get executed because only this line will go up with this if in the statement. So just be aware, caveat, sorry, kind of a little sidetracked again. All right, so let's build. There's too many things we can talk about when we're actually writing code. All right, so then we can see that we actually got rid of our question, or our, um, our additional um, comma at the end of this. So perfect. So that was not too terribly difficult. We got a for loop going, and we were able to easily convert this line of code into something that was pretty usable. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other loops that are available to us. There is a while loop, which is a, oops, let's have Xcode autocomplete that for me again. Uh, there's a while loop, which is a little bit simpler version of the for loop, where the loop will evaluate, or continue to execute as long as a condition, as long as the condition is met. So if we want to uh, write the above code as a while loop, we could, we could do this. We would need a counter variable still, so we'd have to do int i equals 1. Our condition would be the same, while i is less than or equal to 5. Our statements are going to end up being the same, so I can actually just copy and paste that whole block down here. But now there's one more thing we need to do. We actually need to increment our counter, because the while loop doesn't have a place for us to do that in the first line of the loop. All right, so if we build this, we'll see that we have two errors. Ah, so I actually need to change my variable name. So I used n above, now I'm going to be using i. Okay, build again, perfect. If I run it and look at the output, now we see that, hey, we have three lines. This is our one we manually typed out, this is our for loop, and this is our while loop. Okay, so there's actually even one more basic loop structure that we're going to look at, and that is the do while. And so it looks almost like the while loop, except for it has this do, and the while is put at the end. The condition, or the loop still executes while the condition is true, and there's still all the statements that we run during the loop. So why is this useful? Well, the way the while loop is works is that this condition is checked before the execution of this code. So if I actually started off i equals 5 here, well, actually, that would be true. If I said i equals 8, and we hit the while loop code now, 
while loop condition gets checked, 8 is less than or equal to 5, false, so none of this code would actually get executed. And that's desirable a lot of the time. But sometimes we actually want to run this code at least one time. And so that's when a do while loop comes in handy, because we can just write it to do it just like that. So, so does that make sense? So in a do while loop, the, the statements get executed, and then the condition gets checked. In a while loop, the condition gets checked first before any of the statements get executed. And so the for loop is actually the same way. The condition gets checked first before the code gets executed. So if we walk through the, uh, the order in a for loop, what would happen is that our for loop block gets hit. We get the uh, variable n declared and initialized to 1. Then our condition is checked. Then the body of the for loop is executed. Then we would increment. And then we would evaluate our condition again and continue the process. So that looks exactly like what we have here, actually. So the variable gets declared, assigned a value, the while loop checks its condition, executes its, its block if the condition is true, increments the value, and we jump up back to the top of the loop. So really, when you think about it, a for loop is exactly like a while loop, just sometimes it's, it's uh, more readable to write one loop versus the other. All right, so let's go ahead and write our do loop version of this code, which is going to look surprisingly similar. Let's use x this time. x equals 1. We're going to copy and paste all of this, but remember to change our variable names this time. And our condition is while x is less than or equal to 5. We run this, or we build it, we run it. We'll see, hey, up. Oh, Let's clean up our output real fast. So right here, we just didn't add an end line at the end of our loop. So let's do it down here just for good measure. OK. We run it again. We'll say, hey, we have all four of our items. We have the one that we manually did. We have our for loop. We have our while loop. And we have our do loop. And really, that's all there is to, to, uh, writing, to writing loops. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Thanks.